Okay, just doing a little experiment today to uh, try to illustrate um, the, the role that a zinc plays uh, and what happens when you submerge dissimilar metals into an electrolyte. Um, this is my silver silver chloride reference cell. I use this for testing corrosion on boats. Uh, it's plugged into my multimeter. And right now we're reading negative 1049 millivolts DC or negative 1050. And that is the protection uh, that the zinc that's in there gives or offers. It's about a negative 1050. Um, I am going to drop in a piece of simple graphite impregnated flax packing. Not flax, it's actually Teflon graphite impregnated. But the key thing is here that it has graphite in it. Now watch what happens when I drop this into the electrolyte. Now I'm not touching the zinc, I'm, it, it's, it's separated by just the electrolyte which is the salt water from the ocean which I grabbed right off the beach in front of the house here. So we can see what happened to our protection. We lost 25 millivolts of protection with a very, very small piece of flax. This isn't even enough to do one ring on your stuffing box. The more underwater metals you have, the tougher job it is for the zinc to protect it. You want to keep your boat somewhere between probably 650 if it's a fiberglass boat and, and 900, negative uh, 650 to negative 900 millivolts of protection. And we can see what just one little piece of graphite does. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop in a piece, this is some uh, Teflon packing that I've been experimenting with on my own boat that I, that I may market someday. Uh, and it, it, there's, there's no plant-based um, fibers in here. It's, it's all synthetic, but there's also no metals in it. So we can see that it's done nothing at all to impact the, the um, changes uh, in galvanic action uh, between the, the zinc and anything else in the electrolyte. Um, I'm going to go back to the graphite impregnated packing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to the milliamp scale uh, go milliamp DC and we're going to measure the current created by this and we can see, look at that that is the current that's flowing right now in the water between this, that's probably an inch of packing that's in the water right now, and the zinc. That's, that's the current that's flowing. So again, uh, if, I, if I do that with this other packing, nothing. It stays the same. So you can see every time you add a piece of dissimilar metal uh, to your vessel below the water line, you create work for your zinc, essentially. Whoops, I need to connect that lead in order to see that. There we go. So if I go back over to the volt scale here, again, there's our, there's our zinc protection. When I drop that in, you can see it drop down again. So so these are the changes that you'll see, and again, the only difference is here is that the electrolyte um, is what's allowing that current to flow between the dissimilar metals that are in the water. And hopefully that gives a little bit of an understanding as, as to, uh, you know, dissimilar metals submersed in an electrolyte, uh, the role is of the zinc, um, and maybe a little visual experiment like this will help. I get a lot of questions on this, so... I don't know that I've really explained it all that well, but hopefully I have.